just a normal cool Swedish dude. So in case anybody needed their answers on that. But I like this build, Wardy. And like you were mentioning, we have that tech lab going up, possibly to get that Marauder. Well, I don't think Trap is prepared in the slightest. He's got no battery. And to me, this is going to be a lot of damage. As Trap, you can see his instant reaction there. He's not really happy straight away. A bunker goes down, and there's going to be a hard, a hard breakout for Trap. Yeah, Depp's going to kind of get a little bit in the way, but there's there's multiple ways to get around <gasps> Supply that block. natural. So oh. killing the pylon, that is definitely a big one. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at the wrong place to supply. I thought Trap was about to be supply blocked before a Stargate unit started, but just me being a little bit silly as we do see the Void Ray is on the way out. Obviously, that is the go-to to kind of clean this up eventually. First battery goes down, though. What if we just get the pylon power in the Stargate? That's why the probes must pull right now. And these probes looking for a surround. Remember, you've got a bunker on this low ground as well, though. If you get enough Marines in there, can a Void Ray even break out? Oh, it's just going to be tough this entire time. And yeah, you're on one base right now as Cure. Here comes the Void Ray Marine getting the bunker, so that will stay alive a little bit longer. And these Marauders are just going to kind of go for this, huh? They're just going to make a move through and chase down everything they can get. One of death would be nice to get rid of here. I'm not 100% sure about chasing these Marauders in like this. Yeah, at, at some point, I guess he, he has not enough capacity, right? You can only put either mm -hmm. one Marine and two Marines. You can put like, one Marine, one Marauder. You can't really squeeze any of the other ones in. So I guess what he's feeling like is in, in this kind of situation, he's like, okay, well, I've, I've done some damage to the probe count, but it's not really that crazy since yeah. the natural expansion hasn't even started yet, right? Like, this is a pretty big commitment to make, and he has the tech lab up. He's researching Stim now. Uh, the Void Ray is not going to find that barracks that's still out on the map, but it's just an awkward spot to be because you have the Marauders, and obviously, no matter how good they are, uh, they, they're not cheap, and yeah. they don't shoot up. I, I just feel like if you run those Marauders away when you realize it's a Void Ray, maybe you keep some alive, and then you get them going for the Stim Push or something, right? Or you oh. wait for the Void Ray to reach your base like this, and then you have four Marauders it, pocketed to go back, and he has yeah. to recall. Yeah, yeah. It, I just feel like this was not the way to play it from Q. Maybe he can get ahead of himself a little bit, because uh, those Marauders really achieved nothing going up that ramp and chasing into the main base, so... A little weird, obviously, now you've got double Void right here. This is enough Marines to turn this around. But I remember that Stim is coming up, and there's not really a good answer to a lot of Stimmed Bio right now, so if Cure can set up for one large attack, there is going to be quite a bit of potential if you can just get across the map, but that's, of course, what these Void Rays are going to make sure can't happen by consistently showing up and being very annoying. And they're doing a great job of that so far, really using the edges of this base just to make sure that Cure can't chase around as easily. Nice night. Uh, nice split on the Marines now, at least, but again, it's just very annoying from Trap, and Cure would love to be across the map actually attacking. Yeah, I think the most important thing for Trap is to try and keep these air units out on the map, because if, mm -hmm. if he's able to just move across and just run all those Stim Bio, then, you, you know, if the Void Rays have to stand and fight, we know that the Marines can rip them to pieces, but look, now he, he's clearly tried to avoid having to build this engineering bay, but I think even more importantly, as his combat shield should get denied, is he doesn't have the later tech either. It's not yep. like there's a factory where we are quite a, far away from having medevacs or even a star port. So if he tried to stim to chase the Void Rays, that would also be bad. But as, as soon as he feels like, okay, everything's on the other side, I can maybe just chill for a second, get a turret, maybe two, one for each base, and then just dip and go attack, try to do something. That's obviously, I, I, I feel like, the, the play. But Trap has done an excellent job thus far of just controlling Cure's uh, options. He, he can't, you can't stim and chase because you can't heal. So your army will just slowly die. You have to wait. And as long as the Oracle and the Void Rays have been doing that poke, he's, he's been stuck home. So now with the Void Rays having gone back and killed that barracks, he feels like he can move out. But I'm, I'm still a little bit nervous here. Blink is going to finish. And with good Stalker control out of Trap, which we should expect from him, he shouldn't lose too much. It's not done just yeah. yet, though. Still about eight or seven seconds. And Cure is making the most of this little opportunity, Wardy. I mean, that was really everything he could have got out of that. That was best case scenario for Cure. Can you imagine if he had some Marauders still, though? Like, oh my goodness, those talks would have been even more dead. Oh, oh it's it. gonna be a flank! He comes in from either side. This time they can blink well, away. Okay, I mean that wasn't as exciting as I thought it was. It's not as it's not as fun when the slice of turkey can just blink through the bread. You know, <laughs> yeah. what I mean? not uh, it, was, it doesn't make for as good of a dish. I don't it was think. a sick play that was negated by just a, an upgrade that was finished this time around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the Marines stim up, and one Void Ray will get popped. Does have uh, well, when you don't this have medevacs, bad. this is what happens to you. Yeah, you know, stalkers will chase you down, and he can stim as many times as he likes. But at some point, you run out of health. 
and your marines will die. So I mean, these stalkers can just chase for days. Like these marines yep. are just kind of dead for being on the map. They needed to make something happen in the big moment, which they kind of tried to, but then didn't happen. You've got no evacuation plan. This trap is morphing in units to get ready to just go, go, go into this and. We're going to have a pretty quick conclusion to this first game because Trap has got an amount of units here which I don't see being stopped, especially because he's just, you know, Q has been losing so much. He blinks up into a Widowmine. I don't even think that matters at all because the Stalker count is so high. Voider is supporting. Double bunker at the front. Don't matter if you're fighting in the main base. The Stasis Ward will go up to stop the SCV supporting here. And as another Marauder goes down, Cure wow. don't have the numbers. And Trap, I'd say that almost guaranteed oh! shots. Cure! Because then you're going to lose Big a little Daddy bit more. Big Daddy is here. Yeah, this this is still kind of brutal, right? Let's see what these mines do. One, two, three. Oh, that one's not off oh, right man. there. Here we go. Three. This widow mine was obviously uh, a little bit out of position, so it will go down. Yeah, I mean the problem is all the stalks are in the main. And now the, there's a thought at the front. I'm not gonna lie. I think another big part of the problem is where that shield battery is. I mean, the Thor is gonna blow that up in two seconds. Does he have another mm -hmm. shield battery in the natural behind this? Because I, with SCVs to repair and a liberator That's to support his this, only pylon as well right now. Yeah. Oh, he's just starting up another battery now. This is exactly this is exactly what he needs. Does blink oh, forward to grab the liberator? For That's a huge pickup. Yeah, I like that a lot because the liberator can do so much if you just let it sit there. So I like that part of this. Also, the stalkers on the map now. Maybe you could go around and just make sure no, you know kind of reinforcements get here. I really don't think these stalkers should let that tank get here, right? I yeah, really no. feel like this should be something that you're more on top of his trap, and he does get rid of the tank, but he takes a shot, because the stalkers from the uh, top right were not really there right away. He loses power to his two gateways, and again, that's a lot of his production, just not able to do anything right now. He will have power to the robot, the Chrono Boost out, and Immortal, but I don't know if that's coming out in time. Now, it looked like he almost actually had a, a mine go off that was towards that ramp earlier, too. The Thor is inside the natural. Of course, the Hellbat, it doesn't have that bonus light by default, but, man, that cone spray of fire does a tremendous amount of work. Unable to get the Liberator before it sieges up here. This is yeah. big, because this Immortal is going to pop out right inside the Freedom Zone, and that means as this Robo gets picked off, the barrier gets popped instantly, will not be able to build any further supporting units for it, and that Thor is still standing strong. Man, it's kind of crazy, because the wall up the front was so good against the initial couple of Hellions, but it's so bad against the follow-up. So this Thor is putting in work and still putting in work. This Liberator is going to be just about safe. The repair is good. And at this point, you just cannot keep your units alive as Trap and Cure. The Madman is oh, going to get it That's done. It. Yeah, I mean, he no doesn't way. even... Doesn't, you don't have access to the gateways. You've been depowered. Siege tank is here, and... I think we're going to game three, Wardy. I I don't see I, think so too. Uh, I don't see what stops this now. When you got you got a Thor, a Liberator, and a Siege tank in your natural before the seven minute mark, you're uh you're in the shadow realm. This is not pretty. Let, let's just put it that way. I mean, what do you do? He's gonna try and hold the ramp. He just walked in a sentry, but there's, there's kind of a Thor, mate. Like, I don't <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, force fields don't work on that point. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously just trap. He just has nothing, right? Like his ne nexus is down. One base versus one base is always good for Terran. And yeah, this is just not gonna be it. Unfortunately, trap is gonna drop a force field. Thor, move is, the other units. Let yeah. the Thor do its thing. Cure? No. Cure? You like you like Cure the force field? Okay. Okay. We'll just wait it out then. I mean, Thor's get built so rarely in this matchup. Yeah, I guess he's he's like I don't know, he's like eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Force field. Does it break that? Is it an Archon? Okay. Well, I mean, batteries are going down. This game is over. We're just waiting for the GG to be typed. Yep. Trial Council opening from Trap to set us up similar to the last game to begin with, at least. Uh, so you have this Marine coming through, and that will be the probe chased away again as a couple of Marines, a Hellion, and the Starport all on the way here. So see how this turns into. You could go one Hellion for scouting, then move into a couple of Widow Mines still for the Medivac drop. Uh, that's a pretty popular way to play as this, just because obviously you haven't had a Reaper, you don't know what's going on. And then the Widow Mine is, of course, the, the gold standard. So looks like that is the plan, and that Hellion even avoids this initial adept, so that's cute. And he's getting his siege tank too, so we can really see that cure. You know, cure in the first two games brings out some of the most crazy aggressive strategies uh, that you can really do against a Protoss. And then coming into the, the one-one situation, says, "Okay, I feel like I'm the one that's about to get blink stalker all in or something like that." So I'm gonna go for the tank. I'm gonna go for the raven. We're gonna get the bunker. Check off all of the possible boxes because I just, you know, the last thing I would want to do is lose this game in the way that I won the last one. Yeah, what I do like is that this wasn't like the super fast like two tank push, it's three tanks, a little bit more bio, so, you know, the first storm doesn't get rid of everything necessarily, but that's a heck of a scan, my goodness, I mean, now you just know, and you see all these stalkers moving forward, so he's just sieged in the middle, 
Skez trap off, and he's going to back away himself for now. He's moments off, plus one on combat shield, but maybe just really doesn't think it's worth it with Storm up and running and just wants to play a longer game this time. His third CC is done soon. It can move into position, and he'll probably just get those gases up and say, cool, let's get into Ghost. Let's give myself a fair kind of fight against High Templar. Give me, you know, those EMPs, and we can kind of play this out from there. Yeah, because I think that's, that's one of the biggest things, too, is as charge completes and you have the storm to push the bio back onto the tanks, then the zealots can charge onto the siege tanks. And once those guys are gone, if you don't have ghosts, you're you're just kind of asking for it. So you, know, you need to be very cautious. Third command center is just about done, but Trap's third is completely saturated. He's got another forge coming in here, or he has his, his forge is uh, about to finish the first one. And yeah, it's a warp prism in there. So he could take a fourth. He could try to do a big attack and knock Cure off of his third either way. Some decisions need to be made very soon about where this game's headed. This army doesn't have a lot of beef in it, right? Like, I know the two moles and Archon can survive for a while, but it kind of needs a few zealots in there as well. And right now, if there was a fight from Cure and he avoids the first couple of storms, like, Trap would be in trouble. But he's relying on taking a forward position, using the slow zones, making sure you can't avoid the first couple of storms. And then it actually strengthens that army without adding the zealots in just yet and gives you time to run some zealots around the top side, maybe get some money spent elsewhere. And now getting a second Robo up, and I would imagine that starts to lead into some Robo Bay action as well. We'll see what he decides to do off the Robo Bay, because obviously Colossi complements Storm quite well, because Disruptors kind of fill the same role as Storm a lot of the time. So you should say go Colossi, then Disruptors later and zone out of Templar. Yeah, and he's kind of doing this posturing thing, right? But I was about to say, this, this War Prism just flies straight into the main base, uncontested, and now the whole army, you're kind of like, how much of this do I need to bring back? Those charge lots can be really annoying to deal with. Instead of warping in and just kind of forcing this fight, he instead says, actually, I'm gonna just pick these guys up, pull them back, take out the tanks at the front, and try to get this, the High Templar and the Immortals over towards the natural ramp and hold him inside. There's the feedback on the Raven. It was only able to drop one of those auto turrets. There are ghosts on the field now and continuing to build more, but this is such an awkward position to be in because that third base super exposed. The medevac from the beginning of the game rears its ugly <laughs> head once more as that gold base is warping in, but Trap, he's on top of it. Yeah, Trap is going to deal with it perfectly. He loses a couple stalkers, but much better to keep your gold base alive. And obviously he is otherwise backed away. I would love to see Q maybe drop through the bottom side a little bit more as well. It was Disruptors right away as well, by the way, from Trap. So you will just go for that as the Vikings nice get rid grab. of the Prism. That's great to get rid of. Maybe Cure can push on the map again. Yeah, but he has to really be focused about the Ghosts. And the, the thing with that is now we see the transition on trap side. So he says, okay, look, I've gotten you to build all these Ghosts at the very beginning. Now I'm going to say, where's your ranged Liberators, bro? Because I'm going into Disruptors. He's getting Gravitic Drive for the Prism. So he's going to have the ability to maneuver these units around, and this becomes a very important window for Cure, as a few of those ghosts do get feedbacked, and he mm. is able to take out some of the High Templar, but this is a really, really big moment. Huge Zealot Warpin's going to try and go back towards the third, see if he can pull him back, but as that Disruptor count goes higher, those ghosts become a little bit more of a liability, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, difficult to keep them alive when the Disruptors come flying through. You do see this uh, first cell arrives, the rest are kind of waiting, I suppose. So they're just kind of figuring out what the situation is. He's going to warp in even more. It's going to be a massive counterattack. As obviously we threaten at the front here, we blink through even. And there's a disruptor shot, which basically says, well, I can blink forward because what you're going to do, stand and fight? No, you're going to die if you do. So yeah, a little bit uh, tough for Kira as Trap kind of bullies him back at the moment and just using his units well so far. Now extended Thermal Lance again as the game goes on, you kind of transition out of Templar because like I say, Disruptors do the job of forcing the Terran back, splitting away. So the Colossus becomes your kind of stable splash damage force. Uh, so nice to see that that is on the mind of Trap, at least making that transition as we get deeper into this. Yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting too, though, with the way that as that fight ended, he shepherded the army of Trap more towards the bottom side. So even though his army was kind of on the retreat, he didn't really expose or open up the third base. He's been able to keep his economy intact as such, but Trap's got that gold base. He's going for the northwest corner base. Extended Thermal Lance is being researched, and a Stargate is coming in too. So it, it becomes, uh, you need to start actually getting <laughs> some damage in. EMPs the probes to try and help blast him down a little bit more quickly. Yeah, this is dangerous, though, because there's potential just to be kind of stuck there for Cure. There's the Zelts finally saying, well, you're out of position, but the fight's going to break out top side right in a moment or two. Cure's going for some disruptors. Storm's coming down still. 
I mean, for now, Q is okay, but there's the Zelda's top left. That's what I was worried he's going to run into initially. Look at the workers killed, though. 25. Vikings come through, but too late. The Zelda's already in the main. Oh. Widow Minds are blowing up SCVs as they go after Zelda's 40 workers down and cure. But it's a good thing you've got a bank, buddy, because you're not earning any money anymore. It's a bloodbath at the Terran players, natural in main and third. That, that pylon in the northeast corner doing work. He's even going to recall them, says, yeah. I, I'm not, I, don't, I don't view these units as expendable. Yeah, I mean, now he's pushing into the third, and a lot of those units are still up the ramp on the natural, so Chap wanted to get a disruptor shot like this toward that natural expansion. Disruptor's keeping units back. Maybe could have brought one or two of them back towards the Goza, so in the front there, because he actually hasn't really hit with the disruptor yet, and that's allowed Q to actually come through here and do a little bit better, not even, like, clipping away at a couple units at a time. I mean, if all of those take down two units, it's like, you know, 10 supply or so, and that adds up a lot as well. So a little bit of a missed opportunity from Trap, who of course does just have the money right now though, and the work account to really just keep this going. He even blinks away from that Widow Mind Cure, couldn't unburrow it in time. He knew what was going to happen, and Trap's going to keep on pushing in. Nate, he's got Zelts coming through, Disruptor shots firing, and it's getting more and more dangerous for Q as the seconds pass on by. Yeah, Widow Mind's have been a solid way for him to try and handle the Zell account, but as you've already pointed out, I mean, Trap, Trap's rolling in it. He's got that Moolah, the Fleet Bacon is on the way with two additional Stargates, so regardless of whether or not Cure is able to finally get into a good defensive stance, we should be expecting to see either Tempest to break the siege or perhaps a full commitment to air. I don't I don't know that Trap's going to try and do that because that's, that's just kind of dragging the game out a little needlessly, I think. Yeah, it is a tough map to end on, though, right? Because of the... Sure. It's just set up of Blackburn, the setup of the bases, so maybe he just wants to have that just in case. Maybe he keeps trading while building like carriers, right, as well, and just says, well, eventually I have six carriers, you can't ever kill me. So that's very possible, too. Uh, it's obviously right now still doing great, just kind of letting the disruptors have a chance to hit at this army. And he really is coming all the way through here and just trying to keep Cure pushed back as best as possible. With this amount of disruptors, you can pretty much always have a shot going through. Cure tries to dive, it doesn't really work. Takes a bit of a hit as he gets some EMPs off Trap will back away. But then Q's kind of fine with half the army, so Trap says, okay, I'll take some free kills. If there's one other thing though, if I'm if I'm looking for windows of opportunity for Cure as he as well, okay. You know, those, those opportunities definitely <laughs> feeling a little bit more difficult to find. It's, I'm like, okay, he doesn't have upgrades on the carriers, right? There's, he hasn't gone for attack upgrades. Maybe their damage output won't be as high as he needs, and that can burn into the supply issue, but. With, with the number of disruptors that he's been able to retain, it, it doesn't really seem to matter too much. Oh, he doesn't see this Templar! Yeah, Storm is good. Doesn't get the second Storm off, though. Q has a massive army. I mean, his army supply is big, so he has one big fight to try and do this, basically. And that's what this is looking to be right now. Here come the carriers already. A couple of ghosts going down. Disruptor shots will fly multiple at a time because you just have that amount of disruptors you can allow to, you know, that to happen. Cure's supply is dropping. Trap is the one that can rebuild off of this. Cure is not. So as long as Trap just weathers the storm here initially, the reinforcements should then clean up, and it looks like he's more or less there. He's going to lose a couple more carriers as Cure keeps pushing through, but again, you get an extra warping or so, you're good, but those disruptors didn't pull back soon enough, so that's a problem. Cure will at least get a base, but Trap still has 1.5k minerals and 1.5k gas to get an answer and an army up to fight this off. Yeah, I mean, that that's the kind of fight for for Trap where if you're... All you had to do is when you when you started building that first Stargate, at least get plus one air attack. And yeah. I, think, I think things are quite a bit different. The bio having plus two infantry armor has really helped to uh, reduce the efficacy of that supply. The interceptors kind of came out and they all just died. Wasn't really able to get too much done. And all of a sudden, Cure not only knocks that base off, but the third here as well under huge threat. Tons of probes being obliterated. And, and the biggest thing that Trap has going for him is, of course, he still has the more fresh base in the Northwest, right? And, and obviously the gold, yeah. even though it's starting to, I, I assume, get burned through, still has a bit to work there. I mean, he's building two carriers, and three or two or three carriers and Colossi at a time. Still has some of the disruptors as well, but we, we can really see with those upgrades on the carriers. Maybe maybe came back to bite him a little bit. Yeah, blinking back from a widow mine there is Trap. He just needs to get rid of this army one time, and I really believe in him, but. Obviously, he took a lot of damage now. Disruptor shot flies through, aiming for a couple units. Goes to the front going down. This time, there's a lot of carriers again. Let's see if they can do enough, because there's not as much anti as there used to be. And this is what Trap was kind of waiting for. It took a long time to finally set up to get it, but 
Now he's got it. He's going to keep on chasing. He's probably going to blink after these units as well. There it is. He's already got extra zealots warping in. And even just a couple Colossi, now there's no Vikings left, will be very dangerous to this army of Kua, who has gone full retreat after having a great push across the map. He scans the 12 o'clock, trying to figure out exactly where Trap is at, eco-wise. And he's going to say, well, maybe if I can just about hold on, but his army supply probably won't let him do it. No, at this point, it's just the, the, the resources, right? The economy is what's going to carry Trap through this one. Kira did get a couple of great fights, but at the end of the day, was not able to...